Well, but what questions do you guys have from the audience? I'm going to ask a first question. Well, the, not really so much a question, but uh, the last two speakers, uh, when you used the young uh, sailor and his point of view, his vision of what's happening on the deck, and you, when you talk about um, the child, it reminds me so much of what Tolstoy did in the Sevastopol stories, and the kind of estrangement, and also the estrangement that comes up in resurrection, you know, now we're chewing on Christ's blood, mm, it tastes good today, this kind of, uh, kind of thing that um, I find a wonderful um, device, and I find it fascinating that it, it is effective and valid even today, uh, it works in whatever language you're working with. Yes. <laughs> well, um, there is a scene in, in Tolstoy's uh, War and Peace where one of the very young characters, too, and, and this is one of the many, um, I think it's during um, Napoleon's March on Moscow, and, and he experienced uh, battle for the first time. and, and he has no idea of what war is like, and he's a spoiled upper-class boy, always surrounded by, by uh, women who loves him and adores him. And then all of a sudden there's a French soldier charging against him, clearly intending to kill him. And he says, but why is he coming against me? I'm such a nice boy, everybody loves me. <laughs> and I think this is in a way the essence of the absurdity of war. Um, this this question, but why does he want to kill me? I don't even know him, and everybody loves me. More questions? I have a silly question. What's wrong with the Diet Coke? <laughs> it's a child's point of view. <laughs> Everyone is entitled to, to his state tastes. I thought there is something by drinking that cool. <laughs> <laughs> Only the sugar. The sugar rush. That's, that was the idea. I have a, a question for the, 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 the instructor. Uh, what I, after spending five years writing about sailors, what is your next project? Or are you taking a break? Uh, no, I'm not taking a break. Um, my next uh, project is a contemporary novel that takes place um, in Afghanistan. Uh, and it's about the war. It's Danish soldiers. We have a, a small contingent of, of Danish soldiers in the worst place in, in Afghanistan, in Helmand province. And we, we are relatively the, the part of the nature of the troops that have taken the most uh, heavy casualties. And in a way, the scene I described from Tolstoy before somehow embodies the Danish experience in Afghanistan because we are a war that has been practically pacifist. Our uh, national sentiment, our nationalism is quite close to pacifism because we are, we are a very small country and we always had this horrible big overwhelming neighbor, Germany, so you had no choice to, but to become pacifist because there was no way you could ever compete with that grim neighbor of yours uh, militarily. And then you have this, I won't say innocent Danish boys, but, but a war, a, a nation with no previous war experience for 140 years that all of a sudden sends young men to a, a very um, tough war zone. And this contrast, in a way, I feel it's almost like um, the boy in Tolstoy's novels that, that when the Taliban shoots back, they ask, but why do they shoot at us? Everybody loves us. We are so good. We are Danish. And this <laughs> clash of cultures, <laughs> I think, is very interesting. Yeah. I almost hesitate to ask this, but I feel compelled for, uh, for, for Naja. Um, do you have any words about uh, Carlos Ruiz Safon? Um, for those who might not know, he's a writer, Spanish writer, living in Barcelona, and his novel, one of his novels, his most famous novel, the novel of uh, the Shadow of the Wind, is set in Barcelona. I know a lot of people were upset with him because he didn't write at all about in Catalan or have anything really about Catalonia in his, 
in his novel. I was just wondering if you had any thoughts about him. Well, he's a bestseller writer, mm -hmm. and, but I haven't read it. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> um, you know, yeah. there's so many things to read. Um, <laughs> um, it, there's people that people think there's always a controversy about mm -hmm. the fact that he never, you know, he's the he's one of those authors that I think he's grown up in Catalan, oh, maybe because the age. Right. But he 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 he's chosen to to you know Stone, use yeah. Spanish because he's very smart. He's smarter than yeah. than me, <laughs> <laughs> and he wanted to make money. I mean, he sure. there's there's different kind of writers. I mean, there's a lot of uh, and mm -hmm. uh, some writers they they just want to express themselves and and create whatever it's in sure. themselves and in the language that comes up, sure. you know, because I feel like that, I mean, I feel, and, and then there's other writers that, uh, you know, they express themselves in Catalan first and then they auto-translate themselves into Spanish mm -hmm. and then they publish but both, you know, both books that are, are theirs, I mean, if it's their mm -hmm. own translation, it's, it's theirs. And, there's a, there's other other or maybe read up on it's because it's it's from a you know Spanish speak, speaking speaker family. I mean, mm -hmm. sure. In Catalonia, it depends on the place you you grow up. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Spanish is is more influent than than Catalan. I I went to a very very Catalan place. Mm -hmm. um, because there's some areas around Barcelona where you can't even hear the word in Catalan, so maybe it's, that's mm -hmm. the point. I, I don't know, I don't know him, I I don't know why he's he's choosing that language. Or, right. But I guess there's a lot of writers that, I'm, and I, I mean, I think it's understandable. I mean, it's you just wanna, you, you wanna, you wanna keep uh, writing, you don't wanna do yeah. other things that are, I just know a lot of Catalan nationalists were angry with him because he didn't include anything. No, I think it. we are more peaceful than people. <laughs> 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 just politicians want, you know, the politicians want to, you know, to like think that there's a lot of, of, of controversy about that. But um, mm -hmm. that's because they, you know, they, they win a lot of votes with that. <laughs> <laughs> sure, it's not, sure. it's not that's because because they're, you know, they're so upset about the Catalan situation or something. Mm -hmm. And I think the, a writer, the best thing he can do is just avoid this and do whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's you in front of, you know, the screen, there's nobody else, so mm -hmm. you are your own judge. And, I kind of have a question for anybody who would like to answer. Um, when you write your story in your native language, whatever it may be, how does it feel to hear it then translated? I mean, yeah. it's got a totally different rhythm than from your the way you originally wrote. I'm just curious. Yeah, in, in some languages you, you can feel anything because you can with a, a word in that language, but um, if it's a language you know, um, for me, for example, I, I had my, my book uh, translated into Spanish, which is like my third language, and it's so, and it's so difficult because then you work with the translator, you know, to adjust mm. the translation to your own, you know, point of view, but it's quite difficult because you can tell a translator to change everything in, in the book because you don't like the translation. <laughs> um, I don't know, it's this... So sometimes you just read a, a, a translation and you feel like it's you, it's your voice in another language and that's, that's the best that can happen. Right? Yeah. I think that it, it's a kind of blessing that most of the languages you're translated into, you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't have to worry about whether it's correct or not, because you never have the chance of, of reading it or understanding it. 
and with the languages you do know, um, I think that that it's it's very important that the rhythm is actually even in prose. People might think that it's something uh, the exclusive monopoly of poetry, but the rhythm is very important in prose too, and not all translators get it. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and you can you can sit there, it's totally correct, every word is correctly translated, but somehow it comes out chunky and clumsy. Um, and you can especially like when, when you read uh, aloud in, in English, you can immediately hear whether the rhythm is there or not, because it completely destroys your reading if it isn't. Mm -hmm. And I've been very, very lucky with, my, with the translation of Read Found that I'm very happy with. I agree basically with what they say. Uh, the translation in, in English is, is uh, something quite special for me because, for, for the most part uh, of my life, I was really quite a good student, but I only rebelled uh, to one thing, and it was the learning of English. <laughs> The only thing that my mother forced me to do uh, uh, in in her whole life, and, and I think it, it, it's, it is another way of paying her her dues. <laughs> <laughs> questions? Yeah. I'm just so. Uh, you look you feel, good there. <laughs> <laughs> you feel alone? Yeah, I'm alone. <laughs> <there. laughs> um, in most of the excerpts from your book, um, they seem like they mostly were taking place within the home. And as it is from a child's perspective, it seems like it's not being explicitly linked with kind of the real time political events that were going on. But are there parts of the book that you didn't read that connect more with? kind of like some of the real-time things that were going on, and does it take place past 1976 through 1983? Uh, mainly I, I try to stick uh, to the child perspective. Uh, something that always fascinated me about uh, the first alien movie, the, the one that really, really Scott directed, was this uh, thing that the, the most horrifying thing it is the one that you cannot see, the one who, who stays uh, an out of, of frame. Uh, and uh, I could have included, you know, because in, in, in fact, it is not 10 year old Harry which tells the story, it's 40 year old Harry that remembers and remembering uh, the, uh, his sort of gains back his child good voice, but uh, there is always uh, the, the menace uh, out of the frame, but, but of course I think that there is plenty of passages uh, when you can understand and you can feel the, uh, the fear, basically, that was uh, what we felt uh, every damn day. And the kind of more I put in up in that. Well, we can go to drink. That's true. Yeah. Okay. No more. <laughs> <laughs>